The first constable of the Tower of London was appointed by William the Conqueror, the great king who actually founded this castle. And the constable he chose was a knight who distinguished himself at the Battle of Hastings, a man called Geoffrey de Mandeville. The idea was that the position of constable would be passed down within his family. Unfortunately, his son William, in 1101, allowed a prisoner to escape, a very crafty bishop called Ranulf Flambard, who apparently climbed down the outside of the White Tower behind me in order to run away back to Normandy. So the son was fired, and since then the constables have been appointed by each monarch as they are today. So constables were personally responsible for the prisoners that were kept here at the Tower of London, and they were entrusted by the monarch that you are to guard them securely in the prison of our said tower in such a way that you shall answer for them body for body. Fail in no part of this on pain of forfeiture of life and limb and all property you hold in our realms. So you can imagine you really wouldn't want them to be escaping. Today the post of constable is held by a very important military man and this has been the case for the last 200 years or so. But before that, this very important role could be held by chief royal administrators, many of whom were bishops and clergymen. One of the most famous constables was a royal administrator called Thomas Beckett, who went on to become Archbishop of Canterbury, was famously martyred in his own cathedral. He's the only constable so far to have become a saint. The Tower of London was built where it was precisely to control the river. For most of history, of course, it's been much faster to travel by water than over land. The constable was particularly concerned with transport in and out of London and controlling all the goods that came into London. Yep. He could also claim anything that fell off London Bridge. London Bridge was the main way in which livestock were transported into London. So, for instance, you know, cows, sheep, anything that stumbled as it was crossing the bridge was his by rights to claim. So the position of constable was very lucrative one way and another. As well as being in charge of the castle itself, the constable was also responsible for an area of land immediately round the castle, known as the Tower Liberties, and this is still a separate jurisdiction. In the past, because of this, for this reason, if you committed a crime in the City of London, you would race and race and race until you got across the boundary so that the beadles from the city could no longer chase you because you were now in the Liberties, which was outside their control. For this reason, the Liberties became known as a place of lawlessness, as a hangout for outlaws in the most literal sense. So you can imagine, for the constable being in charge of a jurisdiction of the part of the city, being in charge of defending the city, all the arms and armaments here, the problem of prisoners and even, you know, sheep that fell off London Bridge. It was a fairly heavy job. And in the words of one man who looked after the tower under Elizabeth I, he said the post was only composed of trouble, danger, charge and vexation. The constable who had the most impact on the Tower of London you see today was the Duke of Wellington, the great hero of the Napoleonic Wars. He was constable here in the early 19th century for 27 years and during that time one of the things he one of the many things he did was fill in the moat which is where I'm standing at the moment. The reason he did this was that the moat was in the words of the tower surgeon excrementitious. It had been affecting the health of the garrison here at the tower and local residents. Wellington was very concerned about former soldiers and it was he who introduced the system whereby the yeoman warders, the beef eaters here at the Tower of London, were all to be appointed due to their distinguished military service. Previously, it was a post that could be bought and sold. He also did quite a lot to clear up the Tower of London, shutting down the various pubs and inns on site. It was while Wellington was constable that the Tower really became a major tourist attraction. It was during Queen Victoria's reign that this place was open to the general public just to pay sixpence and come in and see the whole site. People had always visited the Tower of London but had made private or personal arrangements to do it. Now it was open to everyone, the general public as a lovely Sunday trip. Wellington himself had a slightly ambivalent attitude towards the general public. After all, the Tower was still a very major military base and he wasn't sure that every Tom, Dick and Harry should be wandering around here.